Hello Thingsters, I'm Clem. Today I'm going to show you how to build your own Python web app and how to host it on the cloud. To do this I'm going to reuse the article that I wrote a few days ago that you can see here on my screen how to build and host your Python web app for free. Hence, I strongly recommend you to start reading this article beforehand and actually when you do you will soon realize that I'm using a uh, a quick, um, a small project called uh, Is it Gmail and Python in that I wrote in this article, and so today we're going to implement this uh, Python project onto a web app. We're going to use the Is it Gmail module, which is used to send and receive your emails with the Gmail account thanks to Python. Uh, in other words, you should start reading this see what the code looks like and then and try to understand here how I made a Python web app out of it and today I'm going to show you how it really works in practice in this live video. So first, what is Streamlit and what is Heroku? Well, let's go to the Streamlit official website. Streamlit turns data scripts into shareable web apps in minutes all in Python, all for free, and no front-end experience required. Uh, this is, it, it's really a, a very nice tool to have in your toolbox. Um, all that I just said, read here, is actually true. You will see it's all for free, no front-end experience required. It's a really a nice way to make your Python web app. So Streamlit will be some Python language and snippets added to our Python code in order to design the structure of our web app. While Heroku will be the cloud server where we push our Python code in order to have a running app with an actual URL that we can share with other people, especially non-technical people. Because usually you would share some Python code or perhaps a Jupyter notebook, but if your uh, presentation is made to people that are non-technical, then having uh, a handy URL is super useful. Okay, so now we're ready to go. I will open a terminal. And uh, as you can see, uh, I have several files in my project. So we are in the fixed Fingster web app directory and I have a bunch of files. Uh, most of which are presented in the article. Um, let's dive right into it, starting with the Python uh, file. So I will open my Python editor here. Let's go. So I'm in my main file, so main.py. Uh, as usual, I make the imports. Obviously, I need Streamlit. So first, you need to pip install Streamlit, and then the usual way to import it is import Streamlit as st. And uh, whenever you see st dot something, it means I'm adding a piece of architecture to my web app by using Streamlit. One example is the first block of code here, st dot set page config. If you look into the documentation, you will see that this is what we use um, to define the the title page, to define the fav icon, which is it's the little uh, icon icon that you see on the tab here. I, I used an envelope because we're dealing with email, etc. I put some markdown. Um, this is actually the background image, and the background image will be this one, as you will see in a minute when I run the app. Um, then is a gmail.init. If you read the article, you will recognize this piece of code. This is used to launch is a gmail and start a gmail uh, session then i have the pure python python stuff here and um, here i'm dealing with the attachments all of this will be clearer when I, when you see the web app in a minute um, i use for example this is a very popular feature of streamlit st.button which creates a button on your web app and if it and if it is pushed then it triggers some action, hence the use of uh, an if statement here. Um, so here, obviously, I'm saying if st.button send email, then send the email, basically. But first, I need to respect some conditions. For example, line 83, I'm saying I need to have a non-empty subject as well as a non-empty body, as well as at least one recipient. 
etc etc and so my file here is about a hundred lines long it's so it's relatively short and uh, you will see that already I can I can make a powerful web app um, then in the article I quickly talk about the proc file and setup.shell uh, this I will not go to, into too much detail about this as basically it's always the same you can just um, get this piece of code you just have to update this part uh, using uh, obviously the name of your python file for example it could be app.py here if this file is named app.py and another uh, necessary file for this project work is the setup.shell and it's basically always the same as well so you can very easily get this on the internet and copy paste it into a setup.shell and then all the heavy lifting is done for you if you put this into your project so if I go back to my project I need my credentials.json uh, to connect to my gmail account uh, I refer you to the article I need my main.py because that's the python, python file and the structure of the web app I need the proc file that I just showed you I need the setup.shell, the token.json is uh, like the credentials.json used by EZGmail. And last, in my project, I need to put a requirements.txt. This is a, a popular uh, common file that is used to tell Heroku which Python modules to load. Here I'm saying, please uh, download Streamlit as well as, as well as EZGmail and as well as Pillow which actually, actually is not strictly necessary, I believe. So you, you see, it's a relatively uh, small project. Um, let's go. Uh, in this readme, I, uh, I made a quick recap of all the steps that we need to, to perform in order for it to work. The first one is to run your app locally. So let's not talk about Heroku yet. Let it, let's just see what the web app looks like in a local browser. So the command is streamlit run and then mypythonfile.py. Let's go. Streamlit run main.py. Now a browser should open and display my web app. Yeah, so if it doesn't automatically, you just pick the network URL. So let's click on that. Okay, it opens, and here you go. This is a web app, so it's like a proof of concept for this article. It's like a website. Here it's look, it's locally run, as you can see in the taskbar, in the in the address bar, sorry. Uh, so it's like a mini website, and here I decided to use the is Gmail module and embed it into my package. And on this website, I'm able to type a subject, a body, all of this is defined in the main.py file that I just showed you. Uh, I also inserted a slider to select the number of recipients from 1 to 5, for example, 2. And when I, whenever I change the number, you can see that uh, the number of boxes changes as well instantaneously. So my number of recipients. And with Streamlit, you can also actually uh, uh, upload files and I'm using this feature here to um, to tell the user that he can or she can actually attach files so you see if I go here I'm able to attach files let's do a quick example test test and then uh, I can use um, this at linkster.com and I'm going to send Chris a photo of Napoleon. Okay, let's go. So here I coded a feature that uh, enables the photo to appear and then send emails. And if it works, you should see balloons on success because I, I coded it this way. Let's check, send emails. Yeah, I have the balloons and email is sent. So now I'm happy with the way my web app behaves locally. So I'm ready to, I'm ready, to, I'm ready to push it on Heroku. I will now close this tab. I will go back. Yeah, here this is these are the logs. Um, I will go back to my step-by-step -step guide. 
and uh, I will start. So first, git init. That's because uh, let's close this. Okay. Uh, git init is because, uh, as you can see in my shell, uh, this project is not uh, tracked by git yet. So I need to to have it tracked. So git init. Okay. I just initialized an empty git repo. Now let's let's check the second step. Um, Heroku creates. Okay, let's copy this and paste it. And now um, I need to pick an app name. I will try Thingster. If it's not already taken, then it will work. Let's check. Heroku create Thingster. Um, okay, because I forgot to log in. I will first log in. Log in here. Okay, this one later. Okay, I'm logged in as you can see. I can now close this. And actually, if I go back to my step by step guide, uh, I should add Heroku login, perhaps, perhaps at the top. This is used to, to tell Heroku. Um, the email address I'm using. As you can see, I'm now logged in as clement.datascience at gmail.com. Um, and by the way, the Thingster name was not already taken, so I could use uh, Thingster. And now the URL of our project will be thingster.herokuapp.com, as you can see here. Okay, so now uh, next step is check that uh, the origin remote is properly set up. So. I will copy that command, copy it here, git remote dash v. And yeah, it works because um, I can see Heroku here. So I'm linked to Heroku, so I'm ready to push. Um, as a side remark, I could also be linked to GitHub. But here uh, I started from a local directory because this is like a, a test or an instructive uh, example, and so I did not start from GitHub. So I, I'm only linked to uh, Heroku here. Okay, now um, I will uh, deploy the app, but for now there's nothing in the pipe, so I need to add my files. So I will git add dot, meaning I want to git add every file that's in the current directory. Let's go, done. I need to commit the files. So dash m meaning I need to add a message. Let's say initial commit for Thingster web app. Okay, as you can see, it seems to be working. I committed all my files. And last, now is the big moment, I need to git push meaning I will send it to the Heroku server. And the command is git push Heroku master or main or whatever branch name you have. In my case, it's master. I just copy this command, git push Heroku master, let's go. Now, um, if you have a little bit of experience with it, you know that this could take from, let's say a minute to five minutes, depending on the size of your project. So it's going to take a little while because it's installing the modules, it's um, it's running the, the shell file and, and it's using the proc file to start a web dyno, etc. So it's gonna take a little a little bit of time during which I'm going to check the next step. And this the next step is this. It's not strictly necessary. I think I, I said it in the article. Uh, this is just to scale your web app. Um, sometimes it's used to debug and by default it's good practice to use it you know just to it cannot harm just to just to check so I will use this and then Heroku open will open a browser tab and hopefully we will see the right URL so fingster.herokuapp.com and our product the very same one that I showed you locally in my browser so right now it's compressing all the stuff for us. Um, you may have noticed in the article that I talked about the maximum slug size because here I'm using a free, a free plan. So of course it comes with limitations 
Uh, the main one being probably the slug size, meaning basically the size of your project and especially the size of the modules that you are using. Here, I'm using, uh, it's a small project, so 133 uh, megabytes, and you are allowed up to 500, meaning um, the heavy modules such as TensorFlow are, uh, at least for now, not permitted on a free plan, unfortunately. Uh, okay, so we're done. Let's scale it. Although, although again, it's not strictly necessary. So scaling dinos, it's done. Now, uh, all that's left is Heroku open. And if ever we have some error and we can't run the app, then we'll use Heroku logs dash dash tail. This shows the last lines uh, of the logs of the creation, you know, the build, and it's often used to debug and to understand what, what, what went wrong during the process. I hope it works, so Heroku open now, and hopefully we'll see our web app in the proper URL. Oh, okay, I have an error related to my browser, but that's fine, I will open it manually here. Okay, it doesn't seem to be working. Um, let's see. Oh, now it does. And here you go. So unlike uh, the 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 local uh, the local web app where you could see some some IP here, now we have a proper URL, thingster.herokuapp.com. And what you have here is my web app, uh, all in Python and Streamlit, and it's actually a website. So you see, in a few minutes, I was able to create a web app. Of course, I, I prepared it beforehand, but it's not, once you, once you have a, a little bit of experience, it's really not hard. And, um, and it's a great way to, to share your data science results or your pure Python scripts or simply to have fun and, you know, add a skill to your um, toolbox. And uh, now it's the exact same uh, app as before, uh, except it's live and you can share it with anyone in the world. Uh, so in that case, it's uh, an email related app, but you could do anything you want. And if you want some inspiration, uh, check the Streamlit Gallery, you will see amazing websites there. Um, so now everything is on uh, the Heroku server. Uh, I advise you to so create an account, link your email, and don't forget the Heroku login part, and go into your uh, personal profile on Heroku and try to play with it because there are a lot of features as well as uh, Streamlit. There are many, many things to be discovered there. Um, this, this was only um, a quick example and uh and have fun so yeah that's all for me thank you guys